I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about three things that you must do in no contact. You know, when you're in a situation that you're not reaching out to your ex and you're really struggling, it can be very difficult. And you want to, kind, you're kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. So we got three things here that I think are really big things that you have to do you have to do that you want to stick to while you're in a situation where if you're leaving somebody alone and you're trying to you know obviously if you want to work it out with them you want to let them come to you right, right? but that time is so hard because every second feels like an eternity but i got three things here that are really important okay the first one is that you want to focus on understanding why the relationship didn't work out. That's a big one, don't you think? And I don't know. She she just got cold on me. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Okay? How do you do that? Yeah. How do you think about it? How do you go about thinking about it? Well, I would say you want to think about where you guys had fights or arguments, disagreements. That's a good place to look. What did you used to have? Yeah fights about? What did you fight about? What did you disagree about? Right. Another big thing I would say you want to look for is, was there something that this person kept saying they needed from you or asking from you repeatedly and you weren't doing it? Right. Right. Because right. that's telling you that they had this unmet need right. and they're trying to express it to you repeatedly and you weren't meeting that, whatever it is. Right. You were on your cell phone too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm or we didn't do vacations together, or we spent too right. much time with your family and not enough with mine, whatever yeah. it might whatever be. Whatever it might be. But you have to really think about what went wrong, because if you don't know what went wrong, how are you gonna fix it? Right. right? You can't, you can't, yeah. that's all there is to it. And you know, it's nice if your partner can cooperate in that. Yeah, but a lot of times your ex doesn't really tell you the reason. You know what I hear the most often? They said they needed space. Yeah. And that they had to focus on themselves. That's a big one. Yeah. But usually those are the like the generic reasons. Right. There's no yeah. no authentic reason there because a lot of times they feel like if they're telling you the real reason, then you're just going to try and say, "But I'll I'll fix that. I'll change that. Now if you just give me the chance, I'll do it." Right. But at that point, they're it's frustrated. Late. It's too late. Yeah. And you're trying to talk them into something when they don't want it. But if you take a long, hard, honest look about, like you say, the things that somebody might have asked from you that you didn't do, mm -hmm. um, and probably one of them is, you know, they weren't present enough. They worked too much. And when they were here, they were just on their phone. Yeah. Yeah. Those are big ones. Those are big ones. But you have to know what happened. Yeah. And obviously, Margaret and I go into a lot of deep issues looking at factors like individuation, mental health. Yeah. Um, attachment styles, all the different areas that we explore um, that help you really look at your own situation and, and kind of put things together for what happened. Right. You know. But you have to be willing to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you keep looking at this cliche stuff that's out there, you're not really going to get to the meat of the problem. Right. right. You know, which is what you got to do here. You know, you also want to think about, you know, how long they may have been unhappy. Right. You know, you might have a situation where your ex has been unhappy for months and they didn't tell you, right? Right. I had a situation today where the woman didn't tell him that she was unhappy and I think it was because she was afraid he would freak out. So she kind of was quickly navigating how to get out of the situation without telling, without him. telling him. What was she afraid he'd do? 
Uh, I think she was afraid. Honestly, I think she had a lot of her own issues. Mm -hmm. And I think that she had a lot of trauma growing up. And so she's kind of maybe afraid of men's reactions. Any any risk, yeah. yeah. Th that somebody might get out of control and really angry. Probably yeah. scared the whatever out of her. Yeah. So I think, you know, sometimes your ex or your, your partner doesn't want to tell you what's going on because they're not good with confrontation or they're not good with handling you know, negotiations. And many or, main people are not good at it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's really important to understand where did this go wrong? What what happened? Here? What did you do that may have turned them off? What did they do that may have caused issues in the relationship? Because both of you are responsible. Mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely not all on you, even though it feels like it. So you want to think about the reasons they gave you. Sometimes there's real authentic stuff there. Sometimes it's just the same BS yep. where they just don't want to deal with something, right. right? But, you know, I think that's a big step in figuring out how to fix the situation. Absolutely. Is knowing... Well, you can't treat without a diagnosis. How's that? <laughs> sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the next thing you want to do is after you've kind of spent time really looking at what happened, your mistakes, where it went wrong, when you had issues, all those things, you want to come up with a plan. Right? Like, what are you going to do to make it better? Why is it going to be better next time? How are you going to make sure that when you're in a situation next time where that thing that you argued about 25 times doesn't become an argument again? Right. Right? Right. I mean, that's a tough thing to do is actually come up with a strategy and stick to it. It's not easy. Yeah. Um, but, you know... You want to kind of imagine what it would be like when you get back together. Like, what are the scenarios? Where did we struggle? What kinds of things do you need to look out for? Yeah. What kinds of things do you need to do that you didn't do? Like, talk to each other, which is the biggest one. Yeah. I was always the kind of person to over-prepare for things, mm -hmm. right? I would... My anxiety would cause me to prepare and over-prepare, okay. right? Well... Like, especially when I was doing stand-up comedy a lot and I would, you know, do a lot of shows and professional shows, I would be the one comic that would go over material again and again At and again. At least it's a constructive symptom. Yeah. It helped you work harder and better. It, yeah, and that was one of the things that I would make sure that I was on point a lot of times because I would know my material inside and out and I would practice it and I would recite it mm -hmm. and... You know, before a show or a big show, a lot of times I'd be outside pacing around, going over my notes over and over and over again. Yep. But it kept me on point when the time came. Right. And so I would over prepare. And that's what I want you guys to do because, you know, you don't want to under prepare and then regret it. Right. It's better to over prepare and be over, yeah. yes. over yes. ready. Yeah, and you feel more confident when you're right? doing that, too. It'll keep you sharp, mm -hmm. yep. right? Yeah. Because then you'll imagine, oh, I, ha I already felt I'm prepared like this for this. Yep. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And then you stay calm, and you feel more confident That's relaxed right. about it, right? And here's the third biggest pointer, and this is really important, okay? You thought about what went wrong. You come up with a plan. Maybe you've done the coaching with us, and you've, or you've done the workbooks, and you've been working on all the skills. You have to stick to that plan when you're in front of your ex. Right. If you get the ex back, mm -hmm. don't stop doing what you were doing. Yeah. Right. Stay motivated. Stay watching the channel. Stay committed to the personal growth. Don't go back to your old ways. You, have, you should see how many people I've seen that will, you know, do all the right things and then... They get so overridden by anxiety or emotions that their ex says or does anything to trigger them that they make a million mistakes. Yeah, or go back to the same behavior. Yep. Yeah. So it's like, well, I got, I accomplished my goal. I got him or her back. Uh huh. So now I can just relax again. Yeah. Oh, don't do that to yourself. I can guarantee that when the time comes, that when you get in front of your ex, your body is going to be overwhelmed with anxiety and you are going to want to start a five hour text conversation or uh, stay on the phone with them for three hours and talk about everything. And all of the plans that I tell you, like 
If your ex reaches out, you want to set a date, you want to do this in person, gone. You Because I had somebody email me recently that they said, oh, my ex finally reached out and we've been uh, texting for the last six hours. No. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, there are some things you really need to do in person. Six hours? Why didn't you set a date with them? Yeah. It wasn't somebody that did a coaching with me, but I was just so... Like, oh, gosh, I yeah. know this is going to be gone before you even realize it because they're going to, you know, know everything about you. That excitement of not having talked to you in months. It's going to be gone by the time you get together. Yeah. I had somebody say to me very hesitantly, maybe there are some things you shouldn't do over text. Yes, there are lots of things you shouldn't do over text. Yeah. It's not as personal as being in the room with someone. You're not trying to text your ex back. You're trying to get with them in person so they can remember what it's like to actually be in your presence yeah. and feel that energy and that connection that you had even from when you initially started dating. It's not going to help you to throw all that out. And that's what I'm saying is like, you didn't stick to the plan. Right. The minute they reached out to you, you panicked. You came on too strong. You, said, you spent two hours or three hours on the phone. You spent all this time texting when what you needed to do is get in front of them and show off all of these changes that you'd been working on right. for probably months. Yep. So, very disheartening for me to see it to happen to you guys. You gotta stick to the plan. Right. Figure out what went wrong. Margaret and I are here to do that. If sure. you don't do a coaching with us, you know there's tons of information. We have like, I don't even remember how many hundreds of videos <laughs> At this point, right. um, was it 700, 800 videos? I don't, even, I don't even remember off the top yeah. of my head. We have the workbooks. You could do a call with us. But really assess what happened, what went wrong. Figure out a plan for yourself or do one with us. And stick to it yes, when that time good. comes. And personal growth feels good. Otherwise, who would bother to do it? It really does. Right? Yeah. It's exhilarating. You can get really excited. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, so important that you stick to those strategies and then stay committed to the personal growth even after you get them back. I say put yourself on probation for like nine months to a year. That's good. Because, you know, I, I did a call with somebody today that got their ex back, gave up on the personal growth, and six months later they're broken up again. Yeah. Yeah. That's so sad. Yeah, it is because he had done so much work. So near and yet so far. Yeah. yeah. So, very important you stick to these kind of strategies. If you like this video and you want to see similar videos to this one, let us know in the comment section. And of course, if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And of course, Margaret is here for Skype coaching. If you feel I can be helpful, please sign up with me. Just click on Margaret to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.